Hey, <clears throat> how's it going? It's Joe. Um, so, I uh, wanted to do a patch walkthrough using um, XO, 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 California Stars. Um, so, what we're going to build today um, is, I guess, kind of a faux super saw patch. Um, so, this isn't really necessarily a patch you would associate with uh, like uh, classic FM or phase modulation synthesis. Um, it's probably something you'd more associate with. Um, with uh, you know a multi oscillator subtractive synth, but um, I kind of think that makes it um, kind of a, a good example to look at. So um, that's what we're going to take a look at today, um, and we'll just kind of walk through uh, building uh, building this patch up. All right, so let's begin by reviewing um, some FM or phase modulation algorithms. Um, this uh, on the top up here is um, an algorithm sheet from the Yamaha DX7. Um, and these uh, describe a configuration of operators um, or oscillators. So we've got 32 algorithms here, um, numbered 1 through 32, and the boxes inside of them represent operators, which are basically just oscillators. In the case of the DX7, they were sine wave oscillators. Um, in the case of XO, they are um, wavetable oscillators that also contain sines. Um, and I've redrew um, algorithm number 25 down here on the bottom, um, and I've just changed the, the numbering scheme to, to letters to match what's in XO. Um, so you can see we've got five operators across the bottom here, A, B, C, D, and E. Um, and the operators that are shown on the bottom are what is sent to the uh, output of the system. Um, so uh, those, are, those are the ones that you actually hear. And those... Um, are commonly referred to um, as carriers in uh, FM synthesis. So we've got five carriers here, A, B, C, D, and E. Um, and we can see that um, we've got this one up here that is not on the bottom, op operator F, um, and that is referred to as a modulator. So basically anything that um, you know is not uh, in the bottom row of boxes here is gonna be referred to as a modulator. Um, so we've got operator F um, uh, modulating operator D, um, we can see it's also modulating operator E, which is a carrier. And then we can see that um, the output of F is also um, fed back into itself, um, known as feedback. Um, so that's kind of what that algorithm looks like. That's how to read it. Um, for the patch we're going to be doing, we're going to be using something similar to algorithm 32 down here. So let me, um, let me redraw that quickly. We're, we're going to modify it a little bit, but let's just quickly redraw that. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Um, so those are all carriers that are going to be fed to the output. And in this algorithm, we've got um, operator F fed back into itself. So that was algorithm 32 on the DX7. Um, we're going to be using, like I said, a modified version of this. And we're going to actually um, just basically give all of these operators um, their own feedback loop. So it'll look like this. So that's something you know you couldn't uh, couldn't do on a DX7. These were all um, fixed algorithms that you had to, to work within. Uh, but this is what we're going to be building in XOXO. Um, we'll be talking about these uh, more in the future, I guess. But for now, we're going to just uh, stick with this algorithm here, which is um, six carriers, all um, with internal um, feedback uh, phase modulation loops. Okay, so um, in the classic. FM or phase modulation synthesis, uh, we really only had sine waves to work with. Um, and uh, in the super saw patch that we're going to build, we actually need um, some sawtooth waves. Um, so over here on the on the Mordax data, um, I've got uh, on channel one here, I've just got an aliasing saw set up um, as kind of a reference for us um, to look at. Um, so, and on channel two here, I have uh, XOXOXO, um, which is our... Um, our phase modulation synth. Um, so let's go in here and first we'll just kind of go into the outputs and um, let's turn up the output of oscillator operator A all the way. Um, let me make sure I've got these set to the same um, base frequency here. Looks like these might be off a little bit. This is 261. Let's match those up. That way they kind of lock in on the data. So we've got a sine wave there, and then we've got our um, saw for comparison. Um, so since this is a wavetable synth, I mean, one way we could uh, get this to become a saw wave would be to come in here into operator A and come over here to the scan control and just scan through 
until we get to the uh, saw wave patch. <laughs> that looks pretty identical right there, right? Um, so that would definitely be one way to do it. And if I, you know, if I really wanted to build the best super saw patch that I could, that's probably the way that I would go. Um, but, uh, you know, we wouldn't learn that much by doing that. So we're going to approach this in more of a phase modulation way. So let's set this back to a sine wave. Um, and one of the ways, there's, a, there's actually a couple different ways that you can build something that approximate a, uh, saw, uh, approximates a sawtooth wave uh, using phase modulation synthesis. And probably the easiest one is just to send some feedback of that operator um, into itself. Um, so we're looking at operator A. Um, and here we've got the phase modulation index of operator A to operator A. So this is a, kind of a feedback control. So let's just start to bring this up a little bit, and we'll watch the blue wave here on the data as we bring this control up. And as we roll it up there, it kind of starts to take on a different shape. And I know it doesn't look identical, but you can see that it's now got kind of a slope up uh, to the peak there, and it, it starts to look a little bit like uh, a sawtooth wave. So, um, you know, when we do uh, this phage modulation things and we're trying to, um, you know, get at uh, kind of classic subtractive waveforms, really all we can do is approximate. Um, so if we go look at this, um, let's look at these in the frequency domain. Um, we'll pop up here to the uh, spectrograph. graph. And as we look at, uh, we're looking at channel one right now, um, you can see that we've got both even and odd frequencies on here. Um, let's switch it over to channel two. And, um, you know, we've got a very similar thing. We've got even and odd frequencies. We kind of start to, you know, lose this top one so it doesn't have as much. But if we bring this control up a little bit more, maybe we can, maybe we can get some of that back in there. There we go. So right around, you know, 2.5 or so um, looks pretty good. Um, let's actually do kind of a sonic comparison here. So these, these look pretty similar on the, on the spectral display as I toggle back and forth between 1 and 2. Uh, we can look at that on the scope. And, you know, again, um, they're, they're not, definitely not identical waveforms, but I think you're going to find that they have a pretty similar sound character. Um, so let's uh, pull these out here. I'm going to unmute my mixer. And gosh, I don't know which of these is which, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and this guy. So it's coming out of the left and right speaker, and you can see they sound, um, you know, very, very similar. Let's mute that for a while. Um, so that's uh, what we're going to do here. We're going to take this um, A to A control, um, the feedback into operator A, and we'll use that uh, to approximate a saw wave for our super saw. Um, you know, with a super saw, we actually have multiple saw waves, and they're detuned just a little bit from each other to kind of get this beating, chorusy effect. Um, we're going to set that up. Um, and what I actually want to do, rather than um, adjusting each of these individually, I want to be able to control them all at once. Um, so let's let's bring this back down to zero for a bias. Um, let's turn the gain up to one. And um, actually, I want to create a custom control here. So let's uh, go back into the main view. Let's edit our controls. Um, and you probably noticed, I mean, as I was, um, you know, adjusting that A to A feedback control, I mean, it went from uh, a very dull sine wave sound to a very um, harmonically rich saw wave kind of sound. So it, it really almost sounded kind of like a filter. So we, you know, in addition to <clears throat> approximating the waveform, we're also going to be able to approximate a, um, a filter here using phase modulation synthesis. Um, so let's go here. Let's drop in a gain bias control. I'm going to name this... Um, F L T. Oh, forgot to clear it out. Let's name it. F L T for filter. Um, let's see. We'll set the bias minimum to zero. And let's see. We peaked out. I think at around 0.25. It looked like our our best approximation. So let's um. Let's set that as our maximum. So min and max. Um, the core step, since we're only going up to 0.25, this is pretty big. Um, let's take this down one and we'll set this to 0 
And let's see our fine step. We'll take that down to 0 0.001. And um, yeah, I think that's good. So we'll commit that. And then we've got this new filter control here that is now uh, part of our, <clears throat> our XOXO unit preset. All right, so now let's go back into um, operator A. And we'll take this A to A control. This is the feedback. We've already got the gain set to one. And let's just make the assignment of our local here, filter control. We'll set that up to control that. And what I want to do here is um, set this up for the rest of the operators as well. We want to use all six operators. So we'll go into operator B, find uh, B to B. We'll set the gain to one. And drop in our local filter control. I'm just going to do the rest of these silently as quickly as I can. Okay, um, so now I think we have all of the feedback controls assigned to our single control here back on our main view FLT. Um, <clears throat> we haven't turned these oscillators up, so we're, we can still only hear one of them right now. Um, so let's go to our output section. And I don't necessarily want them all to be at full strength here. We've got six operators. Um, so let's turn these down to maybe, I don't know, let's do about... 0.15 sounds good. We'll set them all to there so that we can hear the output of each of these operators. And you should be able to see here on the scope as I turn these up, this, this sine wave that we're currently at now is going to get bigger. All right, uh, let's see, I'm gonna disconnect uh, this <clears throat> this A channel here so that we're not hearing that <clears throat> the aliasing saw anymore. Actually, you know what, I think, uh, no, nah, that's good. We're gonna, we're gonna go with that. Um, okay, so now, let's go back to our main view here. Um, I'm gonna set this down a little bit more, maybe 130, 130. Sounds good. And then uh, we'll turn the volume back on. I'm going to bring this filter control up, which should start to morph these uh, sine waves into saw waves. Um, so let's do that. Cool. I think that's working well. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, mute this channel for a sec. So the other component of this super saw is that um, you know we want to uh, offset the frequency of each of these operators by just a little bit so that they start to beat each other and get kind of a chorusy sound to them. So let's go ahead and set that up. Um, I'm going to come here in here to the frequencies view, which is, lets us view the frequency offset of all of these operators uh, in one place. So we've got six of them. Um, the first one I'm going to leave set at the just at the core frequency, I'm not going to give it any offset. Um, the rest of these, I'll turn the sound back on so we can, uh, you know, see and hear what's happening. But I'm just going to knock these off by a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. By the way, we're uh, hearing sine waves now, so I think what you're going to hear is a lot of phase cancellation. Right, let's actually adjust that first. Let's bring, uh, go back to our main view. Let's get these to something more saw-like. And then we'll come back here to frequencies and we'll start to add the offsets.
cool. So we're starting to hear kind of some phasing, and uh, let's go back and um, bring this up a little bit more. Nice. Um, I've already got, I think, uh, on my global channel, I think I've already got a gate and volt per octave coming off of a sequencer here. So let's uh, go assign those. Uh, I'm going to use this built-in level control. We'll zero that out, and I'm going to bring the gain up to uh, close to one. And we'll just go ahead and drop in uh, an ADSR. And let's use that global channel with my gate signal. And we can unmute again. Let's drop in the volt per octave signal. Not that one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, let's bring this down to something. And let's make some adjustments to the envelope here. It's still pretty high up there, so let's uh, I'm gonna drop this down a bit too. So I had some drums in my original patch. I also had a, uh, a delay in here, so we can add that back in. Uh, I'm not going to do the drums, but... Um So uh, that was uh, basically it. That's the walkthrough. Um, what we did here was, um, you know, used um, phase modulation synthesis and XO XO. We just we strictly stuck to sine waves, and we used um, some phase modulation feedback with a uh, six operator algorithm. Six six operator algorithm. <laughs> Try to spit that one out. Um, you know, to kind of um, simulate some saw wave shapes. Um, uh, out of those sine waves and then we went in and uh, detuned them a little bit and um, that was our result so um, hope you got something from that hope you enjoyed um, and uh, catch you next time mm -hmm.